wireless was the thing that I would tune out on. You know, not because it was boring or anything, mostly because I wasn't really interested. So with wireless, usually I would get to the wireless portion. You know, it got to talking about the different types of antennas and things like that. A lot of times I would tune out. So I think this is a good thing for those that want to focus. Welcome to Debt Free and IT. I'm your host, Mike. This podcast is for anyone who's looking to get into the IT industry, whether it's for a career change or you're just interested. I think you come to the right place. Today's episode is all about wireless and Cisco's new wireless certification track coming in March of 2026. So wireless is something that you don't hear that often. It almost feels like a lost art form. Nobody in their career actually says, I want to become a wireless engineer. And one of the reasons that most people probably don't have wireless network engineer on their list of roles that they're looking to pursue is probably because it's not really advertised a lot. You know, it's not trendy like the cloud or cybersecurity, but wireless is needed on every campus, every hospital, every stadium. They all rely on Wi-Fi. And matter of fact, when the wireless goes down, trust me, people will quickly notice and they will quickly report that they can't get on the wireless network. So that wireless network engineer or that wireless engineer is greatly needed in any environment. With that being said, Cisco is reviving this specialty with a brand new wireless certification track launching in March of 2026. So on this episode, I'm breaking down Cisco's brand new wireless certification track, where the CCNA fits into this equation, and also the path to go from foundations to CCMP then also the CCIE wireless. And I'm also covering what's changing with the Encore certification track as we know it now, and also what that means for your career, and also the salary potential of a wireless engineer. So let's get to it. So first I would like to start at the entry level. So the CCNA certification is still the baseline for Cisco certification. So this would still be considered that entry level associate level certification before you go into your wireless route or before you start going down that wireless path. So the Cisco CCNA, it has some sections that covers a little bit of wireless that way. It's not totally new as you start going down this track, but I would say that the CCNA would be the first certification to start out with if you're trying to go down this wireless route. So after you get your CCNA and you decide you wanna go down this wireless track, the next thing to look at is going to Cisco Use website where they have this Cisco Wireless Foundations course, which is a training course. As of right now, there's no certification attached to it, but it's perfect if you wanna build those wireless fundamentals. So after your CCNA, you tie this course with it and it will prepare you to go into our next step. So the next step would be becoming the CCMP Wireless Professional with a CCMP Wireless Certification. So this is where things start to change up a little bit. So basically in wireless, they now will have a Encore exam, which is the 350-101 WALCR, which is implementing and operating Cisco wireless core technologies. So basically they'll have this Encore exam, which is mainly just focused on wireless. And then after you pass that Encore, you select one of the two concentration exams. So basically you have a designing Cisco wireless networks exam and also implementing Cisco wireless advanced solutions exam. So basically you select one of those concentration exams and you pass that along with that Encore, then you then become CCMP certified for wireless. And then some of the focus areas for these wireless certifications. So basically you have RF 802.11 standards, monitoring, automation, AI, flex connect, quality of service, security, location services. So basically this CCMP Encore is basically the same structure as the CCMP Enterprise, but 100% wireless. Quick pause. I'd like to introduce you to the Law Files. The Law Files is a weekly newsletter to help you start your IT career with practical advice and tips powered by yours truly. I launched it in the beginning of the year. It's packed with actionable advice, resources, and tips to help kickstart your IT journey. The link is in the description as well as pinned in the comments. So don't miss out. Now back to the episode. And then once we move on to the CCIE level of this wireless certification track. So as you know, the CCIE is usually the highest level of most Cisco certifications. So you can become CCIE for wireless, CCIE for security, CCIE for networking, 
And also with being CCIE, you don't have to just choose one category. So you can become a CCIE certified in networking and also in another category too. So this is the highest level. And most of the time I've only met a couple of CCIEs in my life. Uh, I know there's more out there than it used to be. I know in the past, you know, you only would meet a handful of CCIEs if you was in the industry. Uh, so I ran into a couple of them. And like I said, for most of them, uh, meeting this achievement, like I said, it's a high standard. So if you're able to become CCIE with anything, my hat goes off to you because I do know it takes a lot of grit, a lot of hard work, a lot of grind. And most people study for at least a year, some of them more than a year. So like I said, this is the highest level of certifications that you can get when you're involved in the Cisco ecosystem. So the same thing with the CCIE wireless certification. So once you get that CCMP uh, professional certification for wireless, then you have this expert option here. So this expert option, it basically adds in some Meraki a little bit here with Wi-Fi uh, 6 and Wi-Fi 7. Uh, it requires that you pass the Encore, the core exam for wireless, and also an expert lab. So the expert lab basically covers high availability, mobility, and advanced wireless solutions. So I've never had a chance to experience any of this because you know, you know, right now I'm CCNA certified. But like I said, this uh, once was a goal of mine a while back. But like I said, it does take a lot of studying. So like I said, you have to be dedicated. Uh, basically, you have to be able to carve out that time in order to prepare for one of these exams. But like I said, they will have a CCIE wireless certification also. So the next thing you may be wondering is what happens to the Encore exam. So basically from what I read and what I get from it, it's basically it seems like the Encore wireless will be removed from the Encore exam, in which um, that's good for me. Like I said, wireless was one thing when I was trying to study for the Encore the couple of times I went and tried to study for it. Wireless was the thing that I would tune out on, you know, not because it was boring or anything, mostly because I wasn't really interested. So with wireless, usually I would get to the wireless portion. You know, it got to talking about the different types of antennas and things like that. A lot of times I would tune out. So I think this is a good thing for those that want to focus just on net, just on networking and those that want to focus just on wireless, because now you have an encore for enterprise only path and also we'll have this core for the wireless path. So now if I'm only going for the networking portion, the enterprise portion, you know, I no longer have to learn about wireless. So like I said, and it was a lot of wireless in that CCN, that CCMP Encore. So it had a lot of wireless there. So it, it, that, that's probably the, the biggest portion of the exam was probably port, just wireless, or at least the biggest portion when studying. So this, I think, will be a good thing for those that want to pursue just networking and those that want to pursue just wireless because now you, you're able to choose which one of these you want to start on and which one of these you would like to pursue. So depending on your job needs or maybe uh, where you see yourself at in the future, now you have two options, networking or wireless. Then also you still have the other options out there too, DevNet, security, and all those things also. So you can pursue one or you can pursue both of them, just depend on where's your end goal and what you plan on getting out of it. And then the last thing I want to look at is the career impact and the salary. So on average, a wireless engineer in the U.S. roughly makes anywhere from 97000 to 130000 Now, this is all going to depend on your location and where you're at. So if you're in a small town like where I'm from, I doubt you're going to be hitting that. You may be doing pretty good for your area, but you may not be hitting that those numbers. But if you're in a large city like a Charlotte or maybe like a, a Raleigh, somewhere like that in North Carolina, or if you're in another state, you're in a large major city, Nine times out of 10, you're going to fall within that range. So 97K up to 130, like I said, it's not too bad, not too shabby at all. And then maybe if you go up to the next highest up certification, maybe a CCMP or a CCIE, then you're probably going to be hitting upper towards the roundups. I would say 125, 150, 140, somewhere around there. So it's going to, you're going to end up getting a little bit more money for the highest, the higher certi certification you got. So in the end, wireless was one of those technologies, like I said, you don't hear a lot about it, so it's not one of those sexy terms, but it's real powerful because there's not a lot of people that's going for wireless. So this can make you specialize and also make you stand out in the crowd, and then also it can help you to make some pretty decent income. 
So let me know in the comments if you have any experience with wireless or if this is something you may look into in the future. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Hopefully you found some value in this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, you can follow me at Debt Free and IT. If you have any questions, you can email me at debtfreeandit at gmail.com or you can visit me at debtfreeandit with Mike.com. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Peace.